Taking a bottle rocket up into the air with an initial speed of 35 meters per second, how long until the rocket lands back down on the ground? So we have to get some numbers out of this problem. You're going to launch it up into the air with an initial speed of 35 meters per second. Now it's going to go up, 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 like we have drawn here, and it's going to come back down and land on the ground. So we know for any object that's up in midair like that, whether you throw it upward or throw it downward, the acceleration is always downward, 9.8 meters per second squared. And it might look like we don't have too many more numbers than that, but we do. The bottle rocket takes off from the ground and lands on the ground. The displacement, how far away it is from where it started, is zero meters. It is exactly where it started. And the final question is, hey, how long does that take? So we're looking for time. From here, we would look and say, what equation does not have final velocity in it? And that's going to be the d equals v naught t plus one half a t squared equation. This one can get a little bit messy. We could actually solve this problem in two ways. I'm going to show you both. The first one is I can use this equation and say, hmm, this is a quadratic. I've got t and t squared. So I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula. If you use the quadratic formula on this equation, here is what it will look like. You will get that time equals negative initial speed plus or minus the square root of the initial speed squared plus two acceleration displacements all divided by the acceleration. We could solve this problem this way. We could also take a look at this and say, hey, I know that the bottle rocket goes up from the ground, up, 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 reaches its highest point and comes back down the whole time it's going upward, it's accelerating downward, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Once it reaches this high point, it accelerates again, still downward, 9.8 meters per second squared, getting back all the speed it lost on its way up. So when it gets back to the ground, the final speed is going to be the same as the initial speed, but it's going to be moving downward. So the final velocity is going to be negative. If you wanted to solve it now, you can use any equation you want that has time in it. So if I use the first equation, which is Vf equals V naught plus a t, I'd be able to really easily rearrange for time. And what we're going to find out is those equations will actually look almost identical. So here, with my Vf equals V naught plus a t equation, to rearrange for time, I'd use Vf minus V0, subtract V0 to the other side, and then I would divide by A. And that would get me time. Well, if you take a look up here, what you end up with, if you simplify the equation slightly, because you'll see that the displacement is zero, so this whole 2AD goes away, is negative V0 plus or minus the square root of v naught squared, which means plus or minus v naught. So what that would look like is negative v naught minus v naught, because if we added v naught, they would cancel, all divided by a. So we take v naught, but the opposite of it, so instead of 35, negative 35, minus 35, just like we have down here, all divided by acceleration, we get time. They're actually the exact same equation. And when we plug in our numbers, what does that look like? Vf, or negative V naught, is negative 35 meters per second. V naught itself is 35 meters per second. And the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And when we solve, what we are going to get is 70 divided by 9.8. And that is 7.1 seconds. 